We're recording. So the centroid of a triangle, to fill in the blank, just to review, it's the point of the concurrency of your medians of the triangle. So in this case, this is centroid P, and the median goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So BY would be congruent to CY, BX congruent to AX, and ZA congruent to ZC. Now, when I'm looking at one median, so focus your attention on AY, for example, we could look at the other two, but that centroid P is two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So it's two-thirds of the whole length. So for AY, AP is two-thirds of that length, where the smaller piece is one-third of the whole length. So the ratio AP to PY is two to one. If you want to add to your notes based on the activity we just did, the centroid is the point where you can balance the triangle. So the question said, find the point at which we can put up a support to balance this shape the triangle, then that would be finding the centroid. So let's first start by taking a look at a question that's all numeric. So go ahead and read number one. G is our centroid. It says that BF is equal to 48, the length, and then the length of AG is 30. So let's start with one of the medians. So let's look at BF. So the length of this whole median is 48. Because the ratio is 2 to 1, or 1, so BG is 2 thirds of the whole length, where GF is one-third, I would first divide 48 by 3 to find out what the third would be. 48 divided by 3, or one-third of 48 is 16. So that's the smaller piece, the smaller segment of the median. Then just double it for the larger. Double 16, you get 32. So BG is 32, GF is 16. So if you're given the whole, I would first divide it by three so you can find the third, the smaller segment. Now, the other segment, or other part of the question, AG is not the whole median. It's the longer segment that makes up the median. So to get the smaller, if this is 30, again, it's a two to one ratio, GE would be half or 15. So if you're given either the shorter or longer segment of the median, I would double it or take half, depending on which one you're finding first, then add to find the whole. And 30 plus 15 is 45. So AE, the whole length is 45, and the shorter segment of that median is 15. Read number two, give yourself a picture. It's good to have a picture when you don't have one. I would first start by drawing triangle ABC. It says that I have medians AS and BT. So I would first, if I'm drawing the median from A, put a dot where you think the midpoint of BC is, which is here, and it's just a sketch, then draw the median. So I draw the midpoint first, and then draw the segment. From BT, so it's got to be from this midpoint, connect, and there's that median. It says A to P. P is the point of concurrency, so that's where they meet. That's the centroid. It says A to P is 6X minus 10, and P to S for median AS is X plus 1. Algebraically, 
how would we set up an equation to find x? So we know that 2 times the smaller segment, so 2 times this gives us the larger segment of the median. So 2 times x plus 1 equals 6x minus 10. We end up with 2x plus 2. Subtract 2x, you get 4x. Add the 10, you get 12. Divide by 4, x is 3. Plug it back in to find the length AS. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 minus 10 is 8. So the whole length AS would be 8 plus 4, which is 12. In number three, they give you the picture. So go ahead and label appropriately. We'll see what equation we could write here. P is the centroid of ABC. A to P is 3x plus 7. So the longer segment. So 3x plus 7. And A to D, the whole length, is 6x. We're not given... PD. Anyone have an idea here what we would do? To avoid the decimals in this, in this um, question, we know that PD is a third of the whole and a third of 6x is 2x. Now I can set up the sum of the parts is equivalent to the whole. 2x and 3x is 5x plus 7 equals 6x. Subtract the 5x and x equals 7. Here's. On the back side, so at the top of the page, the circumcenter is the point of concurrency for your perpendicular bisectors. This point, so right here, is equidistant from your three vertices. So if you have a highlighter, um, you can draw lines in a different color to each of your three vertices. So one, two, three. So you can see mine are in orange. Below it, it mentions the word circle. I can look at each of those distances to each of the three vertices as a radius. So take your compass. If you look at a circumcenter question, you should be able to take your compass at the circumcenter and be able to draw a circle so that it goes through each of your three vertices of your triangle, if you constructed it correctly. So the next blank is, it is the center of a circle. Now when you draw your circle and it's connecting all the vertices and the circle is outside of the triangle, that's circumscribed. You can look at the circumcenter as circumscribed. They both share that circum part. And then circumscribed just also means the triangle is drawn around the triangle. Now the in center, we're going to take a look at where the circle would be here. The in center is the point of concurrency for your angle bisectors. And that's equidistant from the sides of a triangle. So when you draw your circle, and you can see here, I have each of these segments drawn in orange. Because when I measure a distance from the center, so from a point, to a line segment, I would measure perpendicular. I wouldn't measure at a diagonal if I wanted to find my distance from somewhere to a segment. You would measure perpendicular. So here straight across and then here straight to that side. When you take your compass 
and you put your compass point at the center, you should be able to draw a circle so that it touches each of your three sides. So in center, your circle is inside. So this time, the cir or the in center is the center of a circle instead of circumscribed. It's inscribed. So drawn inside the triangle. Inscribed in center. I don't need two S's. Inscribed. In example number four, they say that S, N, T, N, and V, N are all the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle. You got to remember that a perpendicular bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint, so SN, when it hits this segment, it divides the side into two congruent segments, okay? Another important concept, if, you, if you're looking at SN, TN, and VN, that means N is the circumcenter, which is the same distance from the vertices. Okay, you can draw your circle on the outside. So each segment, so QN would be equal to PN, which would be equal to RN. And what is that number? Because it's, it must be given on one of the segments in the picture. So PN, QN, and RN are all what measurement? 5.64. It has the line here to let us know that this segment, PN, is 5.64. So they're all 5.64. So we just found QN. We just found RN. Now I need to find RV and TR. RV is this segment here. And remember, this is a perpendicular bisector. So it splits this side of the triangle into two congruent segments. And I'll use three lines since I use the two on the other side. So if P to V is 5.47, that means R to V is also 5.47. And last, TR, this side here. This is a perpendicular bisector, so it splits this into two congruent segments. So TQ is the same as TR, so therefore TR is 3.95. In example number five, the last question, it says that QX and RX are angle bisectors. So that means X, that point of concurrency for the angle bisectors, is called the in center. Which is the same distance from the sides. So if I'm finding the distance from X to PQ, now PQ is a side. So I'm looking for a segment in that picture that gives me that distance from the center to any side because it's all going to be the same. So the distance from X to PQ equals, now I'm not given the distance from X to this side because there's nothing drawn. I'm not given the distance from X to this side is nothing's drawn, but I am given the distance from X to PR. So if this is 19.2, any distance from the center to a side is going to be 19.2.
And the last part of the question says to find the measure of angle PQX. Remember, you're dealing with angle bisectors. So if I erase everything that I have marked within the question, it said that QX and RX were angle bisectors. So XR divided this angle into two congruent angles. So if that one half is 12, the other half is 12. There's no angle bisector drawn to vertex P, but it tells me that angle P is 52. This angle bisector, QX, divides this angle into two congruent angles. So if I look at the three angle measures I have so far, I've got 52. What's this whole angle if each part's 12? 24. I can find the whole angle Q and then divide it into two congruent angles or divide it in half. So 52 and 24, that sum is 76. Subtract that from 180 and you get 104. Divide this 104 degrees for angle Q in half and each side is going to be 52 degrees. So the measure of angle PQX is 52 degrees.